Hi, my name is Mohit Kavra and I'm from Camping Networks. Today in this video, I'm very excited to talk about our latest product, CN Pilot E430W Wi-Fi Access Point. As part of this video, I will be covering the E430W out of the box components, different parts of this access point, insulation accessories, and how to power on this device. Let's take a look. First, let's begin by looking at what comes as part of this E430W box. This box comes with the quick start guide, the E430W access point itself, one single GAN wall bracket, one Ethernet jumper cable, four Phillips screws, and one Torx screw and one drive pan head screws. You will actually require a Phillips head and a Torx head screwdriver to complete the insulation as this access point is designed for wall mount or can be placed on a table or a desk. On the front panel of this device is a multicolored LED light which provides information about the status of this access point. When this LED is glowing amber in color, it actually signifies that the access point is powering on and initializing as you can see right now. When this LED turns or glows green in color, it actually signifies that the access point is in service, however, working in a standalone mode and is not communicating with our C Maestro controller. When this LED glows blue in color, it actually signifies that the access point is in service and is also communicating with the C Maestro controller. The reset button is located on the side of this device and should be held down for about 15 seconds to reset the unit. And as you can see, each access point comes with these air vents on the side for proper air movement through and around this device. There should be around 1 inch of clearance around the device for proper air ventilation. This security slot should be utilized to secure the unit from theft with utilizing the Kensington lock device. The Ethernet and the pass-through ports are located at the back panel of this device. The Ethernet 1 on a PoE in port is a gigabit Ethernet port and is actually utilized to power on this device and should be connected to the LAN and the DNCP server. There are also screw holes at the back panel as you can see which is actually required to connect it to the stand when you're actually mounting it on a table or a desk. On the bottom of this access point you will see four ports and a 48 volt power port allowing the access point to be able to power on with an adapter. The pass-through port on the bottom of this device is electronically connected internally to one on the back of this particular device so that in-wall wired non-Ethernet connectivity to a device in a room can be easily connected to this port. In some cases you may want the Ethernet 1 port to be actually jumpered with the Ethernet cable like this so that the pass-through port on the bottom edge of this particular unit can actually become the main LAN PoE in port. Now, the short Ethernet jumper cable is actually provided in the box for this purpose. This Ethernet cable can also be used to connect an in-wall Ethernet plug if it is of a wrong type, that is male versus female. There are also two spare gigabit Ethernet ports which is required to connect additional network devices. The last port is the Ethernet 4 or the PoE out port which actually provides DC power to secondary devices and also it is 802.3 AF compliant. A great feature about this particular port that it can actually detect the device power and the connectivity needs dynamically and thereby it can actually be used as a standard gigabit networking data only port. Now that we're familiar about this particular access point Let's take a look on how it is installed. For this video, we're going to focus on a single GAN mounting. However, this access point can also be installed as a dual GAN, general mounting, and also desktop uh, mounting stand, which is sold separately. Please refer to the quick start guide for these additional mounting options. For installation, the first step requires you to remove the single GAN box cover, which is already there on the wall, and replace it with the cambium single gang uh, bracket wall bracket and please ensure that this bracket is securely connected with at least two screws 
The next is actually to pass through uh, the Ethernet cable from, these, from this particular middle hole of this particular GAN bracket. And after that, we actually have to connect this particular cable to provide connectivity with the Ethernet one port. Next, if you have an additional uh, cable, you can actually utilize the pass-through port for the same. In the end, let's see how this access point and this wall bracket comes together. For that, align these two slots at the rear end of this particular access point with these two hooks on this particular wall bracket and connect it like this. And eventually, secure this device onto the wall with a torque security screw or a standard Phillips head screw at the bottom edge. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for watching.